Hello, in this presentation, we will generate the transaction detail report within QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you have been following along with us, that is great. We're going to continue on the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, then that's fine too. You can see how to print the transaction detail list report. This is going to be a report that really gives the most detail in terms of what's going on over a certain time period. So if there's a problem, if there's something going wrong, if you look at your balance sheet income statement or trial balance and say something is not working here within this certain time frame, one place to go, a really good place to go, would be then to this detailed report, which will show all the activity that has happened over the date range that has been given, given a list of the date of the transactions, as well as the driving document, typically invoice, bills, checks, and then it'll give you, you know, the name, the memo, a lot of detail. You can then drill down on those, zooming into those items to see if you see something that's standing out that doesn't look right at that point. In terms of grading an assignment, if you were to actually try to grade what you're doing or review what you're doing, this is a great point a report to look at for that to happen. So if we have an, an employee that's doing work and we want to kind of review the process of that work and see if the actual data has been input as we believe it should be, then the transaction list by date, great thing to use in order to fulfill that function. Uh, in order to do that, if, you, if you've been following along with this problem and you want to restore the backup to make sure we are in the current spot uh, that we are in, we're all in the same spot, uh, you can do so if you have access to the backup. If not, that's okay. We'll just print the same report and show how it is done. If you do have the backup, then you want to go to File, you want to go to Open or Restore and restore the backup as we have seen in prior presentations. We're then going to open up here to the Home tab. Note that, of course, you do need some data in the QuickBooks file in order to run this report because we're going to be running a report that's going to show the data over a certain time frame. So uh, if you're looking at a new file with nothing in it, then you're not going to have any data in order to run the report. We're currently in the Home tab, just so you know where we are at here. That's in uh, the Company and Home tab. Also note that we have the Open Windows open. I always uh, recommend having that done. And to do that, if it's not open when you open the program, go to View and then go to Open Window, and that will show us the windows that are open, that window only being the Home tab at this time. So we're going to run this report. Remember that this is going to include data uh, that we're going to have. It's going to give us a list of all the data. We're going to do this. We can do this a couple different ways, but we're going to do that with the reports drop down. We're going to scroll all the way down to accounting and taxes. And then we're going to go down to the transaction list by date. Transaction list by date. Don't get that mixed up with transaction detail by account. That's different. We want to be down here with the transaction list by date. And we will generate this report. doesn't look like there's anything on it. And that's because, of course, there's a date problem. We're going to change the dates in this report. So we're going to change the dates first to 12-31-20 and to 12-31-20. That's going to give us the data. Remember, we entered everything in as of when we had the beginning balances. As of the end of the period before, the one we will be continuing to enter new data in as we go. So this is, this is the period before. Uh, we end, we're going to start basically entering, entering data after this point. So what we've done so far is we have uploaded in this problem, we've uploaded, uh, well, we haven't uploaded, we've created a new file for Get Great Guitars. We have entered the beginning balances. We've entered the vendors, and we entered a balance for the vendor that was due. We entered uh, the customers and the balance that was due. We entered our inventory and the items within uh, the inventory records. Note what we haven't done. We haven't included any new information in the current time frame, meaning we haven't put any invoices in, we haven't put any bills in. This transaction detail information is really being generated just from us entering that beginning balance data as we've done so far, just from entering that uh, those assets, those liabilities, 
that uh, we needed in order to start the business within our QuickBook file as of the last date before the current period that we want to start working in, which in our case will be January 1st, 2021. So this is the, the last day. We entered everything as of the last day. If we look at this data, just to get a sense of what we've got here, Note that we've got the inventory by type, and of course this is going to be the form we'll look in order to review our progress as we go uh, throughout this whole process here. So we'll get used to this report and reviewing it and making sure that it's looking like what we want it to look like. And uh, so we've got the type, we've got the date, we've got the number, we've got uh, name. In this case, the names, well we'll get into that in a second. We've got the memo, uh, account uh, cleared and split and amount. Note that we can uh, maneuver these and make them bigger or smaller based on just going right in between where those three dots are and making the cell wider or smaller as needed. And if we go through that then we can think about well how did this stuff happen? How did these you know things come about based on what we have done so far especially considering we haven't really entered any any data input that we would typically consider data input such as bills and invoices. And the first item is the inventory adjustment item and it was on 1231 of course as they all are. We have the memo here that being the inventory item and it went to the account opening balance equity and uh, we see it's a, it's a split here meaning there's multiple accounts and the amount. If we zoom in on that then we can see the activity. So this is what's great about this report. If we see something funny, we can go back to the source document. Now the source document may not always look like what we input. For example, this one we used a multiple input screen in order to upload this information. When we go back to it, uh, it's only showing the, the one, basically one input screen, one item at a time. Uh, but this is gonna be the most kind of normal document that would make this inventory item and we can see that we have the item name the description the quantity and then the value uh, within this screen so this is going to give us the detail when we double click on this information i'm going to close that back out those were the inventory items we set up and again we set them up in such a way that uh, we didn't have to put a journal entry in we just put the beginning balances in in a prior video you could take a look at that and these are going to be the same balances for those transactions. QuickBooks generating this transaction detail from those beginning balances we had put in, in that case, from the inventory. Then we have this invoice. And again, we're, we're thinking, well, we never even put in an invoice. And it generated an invoice. Why did that happen? Because we set up these three customers. And those three customers... Uh, had balances that was due to them as of the point in time we set this file up and QuickBooks uses the form of an invoice to record that information. So even though we didn't generate an invoice, we hadn't yet seen an invoice, when we put those balances in the beginning balance, uh, QuickBooks generated an invoice. If we double click on these amounts and see what happened by zooming in, drilling down as I would typically call it, we see the invoice here again. We didn't really make this invoice, but it has been generated as we put in that balance. Note the, there's no item, there's no quantity. They just posted it to opening balance or, or the description here is to opening balance. So this is the form that has been generated as we put in that beginning information. That's okay for us right now uh, because it's gonna make the balance sheet account correct and the income statement account is as of the prior year, which we're not going to be using, which will then roll into the balance sheet accounts. So I'm going to close this out. And we have an invoice, an invoice, and then a bill. And again, we didn't enter a bill. Where did that come from? Well, we have this vendor, Epiphone, where we buy our guitars from, and we owed them 15000 We put in the beginning balance of what was owed to them, and QuickBooks generated a bill because that's the driving form that is used when QuickBooks says you owe someone money, that account being related to it of accounts payable. So if we double click on that, zooming in on that, then we can see uh, the bill being generated. Again, the account and the expense account, uncategorized expense, not a good expense. Typically, we would probably want it someplace else, but we're not worried about it because we put it in there as of the prior year. And we're not running reports in terms of the income statement as of 2020. 
we just put the information in as of that date so that it would roll forward correctly, closing out to the balance sheet as of the first date of the time period in which we want to enter new data like bills and invoices, that being January 1st in our example, 2021. I'm going to close this back out. We then have a, a deposit here. We didn't enter a deposit. Where did that come from? Well, we entered something in the checking account. And when we did that, the uh, software uses the form of a deposit to drive that transaction. So all we did was open the checking account and put a beginning balance of 25000 in the beginning balance. And QuickBooks then generated this. So we're going to zoom in on this. And, and again, this is kind of the cost of of not putting in journal entries and, and whatnots so that this is happening. But it all works out as long as we put the dates in there as of the, the last date of the prior period and it'll all uh, work out um, for the first date of the current year that we will then be working on. But note that we deposit, here's a deposit slip and it went uh, from account to opening balance equity. Again, we don't want opening balance equity, that's a funny account. It's, a, it's basically an admission by QuickBooks saying we don't know where to put this, so we put it into opening balance. We had corrected for that, however, with a journal entry. So that's the one journal entry we had to put in in order to adjust this, but uh, that's what was generated by QuickBooks when we entered that beginning balance. Then we've got the credit card here, and that's going to be the credit card charge. I'm going to make this a little bit larger. Again, we never we never put anything in called a credit card charge, but we did put a Visa account in there, and we did put an opening balance in there of 1,000. When we did that, uh, QuickBooks takes the form, generates the form. That's what drives things within QuickBooks transactions, things that drives financial transactions. And so if we double click on that 1000 to zoom in on it, we'll see the credit card purchase charge here. And again, it went to uh, the memo opening balance, account opening balance. That's not a, a real kind of account that we want to be typically using, <laughs> but but it will. we've already adjusted for that and uh, in a prior presentation. So you can take a look at how we dealt with that but note what is being generated as we set up this company, as we put these opening balances in. We then had a loan and a furniture, and that, that means we put the loan on the books. Again, we didn't make a journal entry. This is more typical, however, to just make a journal entry. That's kind of what we would expect when we set up beginning balances. Uh, but in this case, we set it up by opening the loan account and putting in a balance in opening balance. Now, because a loan is not a typical transaction, it's not something that like a bill or an invoice we do all the time, like revenue or expenses that we see commonly, the QuickBooks goes to the, uh, the journal entry, which is kind of like the last resort if it's not a normal transaction. And so if we double click on this item, we see this information. It tries to, tries to really resist going to debits and credits by first going to this ledger uh, but the ledgers are almost just as confusing when we're not really talking about um, a ledger that's commonly known to us. So I'm going to double click on the journal entry right here. And this is really what it generated is this journal entry. I'm going to close this. It uh, credited loans payable and it debited opening balance equity. We may not know what debits and credits are and that's the point. That's why QuickBooks is really trying to trying to hide the fact that these are these are journal entries or trying not to have us worry about it. Trying to fill in a system that we don't have to deal with it but just so you can see the behind the scenes this is this is what was generated again it put it in the opening balance equity which is something we had adjusted for in a prior presentation but this is how QuickBooks is dealing with us putting in those beginning balances I'm gonna close that I'm gonna close that we then have furniture and fixture once again being done with a journal entry uh, again, we didn't put a journal entry in. What we did is we went into furniture and fixture and we entered a beginning balance. What did QuickBooks do then? If we drill down on this, we, it tries to take us to another uh, register here. But I'm going to take a look at the journal entry by double clicking right on the journal entry. And it generated this journal entry, debiting furniture and fixture, crediting opening balance. This is the side we pretty much saw when we entered the opening balance. This is the side that QuickBooks had to generate in order to make things work without us having to tell it where to put that credit balance. And that's the adjustment we made to opening balance because that's not typically an account we want to use in a prior presentation. 
we'll close this back out and last one we have uh, the opening balance this was the one journal entry we made and that was to close out the opening balance to zero with a journal entry so in essence this is the information that we have uh, if your stuff ties out to this if you could just tick and tie everything out to this then your uh, financials are most likely exactly like the financials that we have if there's something that is not uh, ticking and tied out to this then something may be uh, different and and not correct and if it, there is a problem with it then what you want to do is really change the date ranges meaning change the ranges all the way back to maybe 2000 so you can try to pick up any kind of date problems and then bring it forward to at least the next year uh, to see if we entered anything as of the next year that we're going to be putting stuff into and if anything else appears and you see a different date other than tw uh, 2020 then you want to, you could just double click on that change the date within the detail within uh, that information we're going to change this back to 21 and I'm sorry 20 and 20 so that's going to be uh, this information uh, if if it's out of order however notes that that could be just the ordering that you put it in there being a little bit different and the dates still being the same so what you really have to do if you were to check this stuff off is just basically tick and tie this is I see this here I see this on mine I see this here I see this on mine and tick and tie each one of them off individually and look for any differences once we have this then we are going to export it to Excel and put it to the a workbook we have been working on if um, if you're not working on that workbook and you want to export it for practice then go ahead and export it uh, for practice and use a, a new workbook we could of course print it at this time save it as a PDF I like to get in the practice of, of saving it to an Excel file I think that's a really useful tool to develop and so we will do that I'm gonna go up to Excel here we're gonna select the drop down we're gonna create new worksheet create new worksheet we will then have an option pop up and it's going to say create new worksheet we then want to go to an existing workbook that workbook the one we've been working on if you don't have one open then go we can create a new workbook and it's already going to the place we want because we've been doing this for a while but we're going to go to browse here and find our workbook that's it that's the excel workbook double click on that it should then be taking it to that workbook then we're going to say export it will then open up QuickBooks it will export this data to QuickBooks within a new tab in QuickBooks and name that tab probably sheet one and then what we're gonna do is rename that sheet tab and organize those sheet tabs in uh, the organization and form that we want and do any other formatting that is necessary at that time here is our form notice it is a bit wide meaning that it will print on two pages wide which can be a bit confusing it put the sheet here in the middle of the other sheets that we have made we're going to go ahead and pull that to the right hand side by left clicking on it dragging it to the end over here I'm going to double click on that and we're going to call it transaction and I'm just going to call list well, let's call it that and there we go and that is going to be that and uh, note of course the header will be up top if we were to go to the file and the print view we would see that the header did pull over there gonna go back and uh, that's gonna be it so we'll save this and say save that and that will be that